to Pixel Tunes Radio, a podcast where we have fun talking about video games and video game music. I'm Slam a Jam a Mike. And I'm Gridiron Ed. We're here to talk to you about sports games. Yes, sports games of all sorts, except for like Madden. <laughs> yeah, everything but Madden. <laughs> we're just limiting Madden. No, we're talking about mostly classic sports games right. today. Now, I'm not the biggest sports guy in the world. I, you you like you seem to follow a couple teams, but I don't see you walking around with like you know big foam fingers on your. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm I, I went Heisman. You full, went Heisman. I went Heisman. <laughs> How does one go Heisman? Full, full Heisman. <laughs> like Heisenberg. I went Heisman. That's all you need you to know. You won the college football. <laughs> no, uh, I just MVP I just went Heisman. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That explains everything. Yeah. No, um, you you pretty much nailed it. I I you know I enjoy sports. This episode is basically going to be mostly retro sports, a couple newer sports titles, but we're going to keep it fun, we're going to keep it fresh. I was actually surprised with the music in this episode, because mm. I'm thinking, you know, you think sports games, you don't really think about music That's true. too much, yeah. but we dug up a lot of really, really good tracks, and I, I don't think there's a single track in here that I'm really iffy about. I think they're all really strong, strong pieces of music. I'm not going to lie, this is a very nostalgia-heavy episode mm, for me. Me too, me too. Yeah. We're going to get into it in just a moment, but we want to talk about Clarification Corner. Yes, that's when we screw up and you correct us. Yeah, Or we correct ourselves. Ooh, yeah, so the first true. one is a self-correction, actually. So last episode, we talked about a game called Champion of the Bullfight Ring, and uh, Mike was talking about wanting to be the scarf I still do. In which the bull would kind of, you would see it from a first person perspective and yeah. we kind of went off about really wanting to play this game and how a bullfighting game would be so cool. Unfortunately, I ended up looking it up and playing and it's actually kind of a crappy boxing game. Oh, so wah, I guess wah. bullfighting, boxing means the same thing in, in the land of the rising sun. I'm, so. I'm still going to pretend that it's a bullfighting game. Okay. Sorry. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone was wanting to go check it out, still can, but you're not really going to be impressed. Uh, there's a lot of better boxing games you're, out there. You're really underselling this game. It's, it wasn't very good. <laughs> Sorry. What's our second game? Numero dos was Liberation Day from Liberation Maiden, which we credited to Akira Yamaoka. Now, our pal uh, Vasily Bochkov, Knivesman from the land of bears. Bears? Russia. Oh, okay. The land of bears. Uh, I think I think like forest when you say bears. So I was thinking like, does he live well, in like, forest? Well, like, you know, Zangief, the Russian wrestler, wrestles okay. bears. There's always a bear somewhere. When, I was when say Americans it. talk about Russia, a bear always ends up showing I up somehow. I think of vodka when I think of Russia. Vodka too. Yeah. Drunk bears. Yes. Bears and vodka. Bears and vodka. That's a great combo. Probably not. No, bears are awesome. Yeah, but not when they have vodka. No, you drink vodka, then you hop on a bear. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I, I can do that. Okay. We need to make a game about that. Yes. So, so. in any case, <laughs> he pointed me toward a uh, page in which the correct credits for the game are located, and Liberation Day was actually composed by Noriasu Agematsu and arranged by Agematsu as well, along with Tomohiro Kita. So, thank you, Vasily, for correcting us on that. Sorry for stereotyping your country so badly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I said nothing but praise on No, that. yeah, it's cool. I'm, it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying anything bad about Russia. I'm 50% Russian, man. We gotta respect our own. Sweet. Anyhow, that's our correction corner. Glad we could make it up to you guys. Glad we could corner We're currently you. currently on our knees with our hands clasped, begging you for forgiveness. Nobody puts Ed in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the clarification corner. In the clarification corner. corner. <laughs> All right. Let's get on with the subject of today's podcast. Sports! Sports. We're, That's it. We're, Have a good night. People use physical <laughs> abilities to gain points. In things. In things. Yes. And hopefully Games. earn money while doing so. Lots and lots and lots or of money. Or the honor of their peers. Yes. You can tell how much of a sports fan I am. Yeah. Doesn't really mean not. that, you know, doesn't mean I'm going to... Like pick bad songs or anything. True. So don't worry about that. Well, let's talk about our first sport. So what is our first sport? First sport is basketball. I loved basketball when I was a kid, man. Sixth grade, that was like a special time in my life when the Charlotte Hornets were like crazy big and I was like super into anything to do with basketball. So I watched basketball games. I, you know, collected basketball cards. I had like Shaq's rookie card and like all this. Like I was crazy into basketball for like a two-year period. We had a Charlotte Hornet that actually went to my high school, graduated two years before me. Really? I would drive past his house that he grew up in like every day on the way to school. That's pretty cool. cool. Scott Burrell. Okay. 
That name sounds familiar. He only lasted a couple years, I think. Okay. But he was a good dude. Do you remember the starter jackets that everybody wore? Oh, of course. But we, see, in, in, in my town, it was the starter football jackets. Nobody oh. wore the basketball ones. Okay. So everybody in my town wore the basketball ones. And so I told my dad, I was like, I want a Charlotte Hornets starter jacket. So he got me this Charlotte Hornets, like, letterman jacket. It's, like, huge and, like, like the material was, like, it was like felt. It was Ple oh, it was, it was not like, the pleather. No, it was like a Letterman's jacket, and I was like so. I was like the biggest brat about it. I was like, "This is stupid. I hate you." And you know, like looking back on it now, I feel really bad because I was such a baby back then, yeah. and such a jerk about it. But that's pretty much it. I was really that's your basketball. That's story. my basketball story. <laughs> I'm, I'm. I was a total brat. We're gonna talk about a game that I've never personally played, but we're gonna cover one of the songs about it. It's called NBA Give and Go. And this came out on the Super Nintendo, and the track is just simply called In-Game BGM5. So let's hit it. Hit it. Welcome back. That was NBA Give and Go, and that was in-game BGM5. Such a great title. Isn't it? <laughs> Very original. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was composed by Masahiko Kimura, and uh, he worked for Konami for quite a while. That was his first game done back in 1993. Uh, among other games he worked on was uh, Rakuga Kids, which we played during our... N64 Invasion podcast. That was, what, episode 35, I believe? Yes, it was. We spoke about him a little bit. He did some Goemon games, some Dance Dance Revolution stuff. Pretty much stuck with the with the Konami titles. So this one's got kind of a unique sound to it, among his other stuff. Especially with, like, the Goemon stuff. It was a very Japanese-flavored, kind of classical style with an upbeat tempo. But this is, like, hip-hop. Rhythm. That kind of 90s, like, yeah. quasi-New Jack Swing kind of stuff. Kind of original for the SNES. Very 90s. I mean, you've got basically a backbeat, and you've got some PCM kind of samples. Little chunky some, guitars. Yeah, a little, like, overdriven guitar kind of, like, just kind of floating in there occasionally. Reminds me a lot of, like, maybe, like, a CNC Music Factory type thing. Oh, yeah, especially like, with those sampled shouts. Yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, waiting for, like, <laughs> I got the power to somebody to be like, I got the power! Perfect. You know? That would have been perfect. Uh, there are yeah. a lot of other, like, shouts of that stuff and right. other tracks in the in the game. Need, like, little clips of just some random person going, like, jam you know, like, stuff like that. Like, that's what made the 90s, like, basketball game so great. Clips from a Ninja Turtles movie or something. Just a slice of pizza just goes on the screen somewhere. So, how does this game play? Is it pretty good? The game's good? actually pretty good. Yeah. It's uh, essentially a home port of Konami's run and gun game for the arcade. So it Which sounds like a shooter. <laughs> basically, yeah. yeah. But it shows the court from a behind the net perspective. Oh, that's neat. Kind of similar to like the John Madden football games, mm -hmm. but you can imagine that on a basketball court. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing single player, whatever team you are, you're you're shooting at the basket farther away from you and the computer's trying to, to score on the basket that's like basically in front of your face the whole time. Right. Uh, the game plays pretty well though. You know, there's an icon over your character to who you're going to pass to and you can like change who you're going to pass to as you're playing. Mm -hmm. Controls are responsive. You can do dunks pretty well. It'll do replays of like dunks and alley-oops and cool plays as you go. It's just a fun little title. I don't think it got very much 
respect, I think, you know, a couple of the other more American developed, like the EA basketball games that yeah, really overshadowed it. Those yeah. were the ones that, like, everybody loved back yeah. in the day. Well, I mean, it makes more sense, too, because you're talking about a Japanese developer developing a game that's a very American western type of game yeah yeah it'll work for some which sure. you know, some of those will actually end up playing further on in the podcast yeah this was released in japan as nba gq basket winning dunk it should have been like they should have just kept it going with like more and more english like winning dunk forever or something like yeah yeah uh, <laughs> winning dunk for every person all the time happy dunk pro happy dunk pro <laughs> <laughs> happy dunk and go <laughs> so uh, Give and Go was followed up with NBA Run and Gun 2 and then that segued into the NBA In the Zone series on the PlayStation oh, okay, I've heard In of the those. Zone that was actually a really good PlayStation basketball game Really, very very impressive I remember a lot of the magazines really going kind of ape spit over that mm. that basketball game it had really good graphics for its day it played kind of slow and stiff but it was mm. like you know the first real true 3D basketball game out there. So this game's got a little bit of cool history behind it. How about we move on to a basketball game that everybody's probably heard of. I love this game. Who Can doesn't? I just say? I think there were too many versions of it. Like I said, but sixth grade. Great game. This is my jam. Literally. Your NBA jam? Oh yeah. Let's go with NBA Jam Tournament Edition. And this is the title screen music by Mr. John Hay. Sixth grader? <laughs> I'm in my 30s. I heard you like NBA Jam on your Sega Nintendo Enter Genesis system. My what? Ah, uh, then you're gonna love NBA Jams. What? It's easy. Pick your favorite basketball player's jam, each with its own unique taste. You can go with Muggsy Bogues' Muggs and Berry Jam, Scotty Pippen's Piping Hot Cinnamon, or Carl Malone's Jazzberry Blue, now loaded with 100% high fructose corn syrup. Oh, that sounds revolting. Couldn't I just play NBA Jam? Save the jam stickers on the sides of the containers and you can mail away for your very own NBA Corp placemat to put all your favorite flavors, I mean players, I mean flavors, next to each other to duke it out for the championship trophy. This is like the worst product placement I've Get ever- Get slamming and jamming with NBA Jams today. All jams are manufactured in Pakistan and Turkey and may not taste like the advertised flavors. 400 players in all. Hologram jam players are an extra $1.99 per jar. Michael Jordan not included. Well, 
Welcome back. That was NBA Jam 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 Tournament Edition, and that was the Super Nintendo version of the game. That was the title screen, and man, my head is dizzy from all those drums. It sounds like they just took a bunch of basketballs and they just like like slammed them or jammed them. All over the drums. Here's what I imagine. Okay. There's some 18-year-old kid, all right? All right. He's all decked out in 90s gear. He's got the sports jacket okay. with the sleeves rolled up and the pencil-thin tie. I'm feeling it. And the, 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 the orange Ray-Bans or yes. whatever. And he's trying to play this cool little title screen song. Yeah. But this Dutch family comes in and they keep <laughs> trying to clog dance on top of his keyboard. And they're like... Yeah, yeah. All over his keyboard. And he's just... He doesn't care, man. He's just playing. And then he finally knocks them off and then he continues on with the right, song. Right, right. But then they come back for the second loop. Right. And it just get, keeps going ad infinitum. Right, So right. Okay. That's my... That's, That's my your... interpretation of this song. Okay. However, in all seriousness... Yes. It's a very sporty song. It I mean, is. You've got those kind of... Horns, like I don't know, brass, brass horns. It's like, very, what is that sound? Very like, like harsh piano. Yeah, it's like really harsh '90s keyboard. Yeah, like those house synths or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just really strong, sharp piano. Yeah, that's just like really warped and like yeah agitated. And then the brass like, is like doo, 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 doo. right. Yeah, just those drums in the beginning. Really, I I know I talk a lot about drums as a drummer, but. They're just nonsense noise. It's just <laughs> like, it just gets you pumped up. You're just like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, yeah. They're a little more subdued in the FM version. Pish posh. No, I know. No. This is actually the better version Thank of. Thank you. The ones that I've heard of the arcade, the Genesis, and this. And this, I think, is right. definitely the best. I, you, I, like I said, blind nostalgia. I'm sorry. I've, I've talked to people who were like, no, the Genesis version's better, man. And I'm like, no. No, you shut up. No. And I scold him like a dog, and I'm like, bad, no. Wow. Seriously, like, I don't know what it is about this game. I don't know, this, the Super Nintendo version just felt really fast. And I would say, and this is weird for me to say, because normally I would say the Genesis games typically run faster and more, you know, higher energy and everything. But this game ran really fast, especially when you do the, the turbo shoes. Yeah, yeah. So the whole purpose of this game is it's a, it's a two-on-two basketball game you can switch in between hyper realistic basketball right, game. right it's not realistic like nba give and go this is just side scrolling basketball craziness at its finest and they kind of continued this later on with like the nfl blitz type games with uh football and um hit NBA, the ice right and hit the ice nba jam had like other sequels this was the second game that came out the first one was just regular nba jam i don't know why specifically i really like tournament edition I don't know. I mean, I played the first one, I did, and for whatever reason, I think I just really liked the tournament edition. You could unlock, like, different characters that were all, like, crazy, Yeah, like, I think it had more of an expanded roster. It was right. Like, they put, like, like, coat of polish on it. Right, right. So that was the thing. Like, Street Fighter Two Championship Edition was out, and it was kind of, like, the acceptable thing to do to, you know, bring another version of the game out without making it a full sequel and just kind of polish it up and expand upon it. Right. I mean, you would add different characters to the roster and maybe introduce some new game mechanics, that sort of thing. In this game, believe that they introduced like the turbo shoes and they introduced like the spots on the court. The where sweet you could, spots? The sweet spots, yeah, where you could like uh, shoot and get like 10 points, 8 points, and everybody hated playing with those. But I was always like, yeah, let's play. Let's play with those. Yeah, there was the know, option to turn those on and off. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, like, people just didn't like playing as them. Because if you scored a 10 and somebody else just sucked at the game, they just... That was it, man. Like, you were done. Yeah. But you had, like, all these cool cheat codes that you could input. I mean, that was back in the day when cheat codes were, like, all the rage. Yeah, and you can make their heads really big. Yeah, yeah. You, you can unlock the developers of the game yep. as players. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was in there. Yep, and Hillary Clinton, Beastie Boys... Some of the mascots, like uh, Hugo the Hornet from the Charlotte Hornets yep. and uh, Horse the Bull, if I recall. Yeah, from, it was uh, just a lot of fun. The Bulls. So much yeah. cool stuff you could do. Really fun game. Actually, one of the really weird things about the NBA Jam series is there were two characters that were not in the game that really should have been. And one of them was Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, who was playing at the time for the Orlando Magic. And the other was, of course, the infamous Michael Jordan, who just... You couldn't go anywhere back in the 90s without hearing about Michael Jordan and the Bulls' like successful run. I mean, they won like three or four championships like back to back to back to back. So kind of crazy that you can't play as Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Maybe they just wanted to make it a little bit more fair because everybody would play as the Bulls. I think maybe he was just too expensive. Yeah. You know, Nike already had their hands on him, and True. I'm sure it would have been a whole legal hassle. 
Shaquille O'Neal already had video game deals right. going with Shaq, Shaq Fu and all that oh, stuff. God. So he, he might have, you know, he might have had exclusive rights for digital form in right. that particular game. So NBA Jam couldn't license him. Right. Michael Jordan has his own game though. He had a uh, Chaos in the Windy City. Chaos in the City. City. So yeah. They had something to do that with game it too. is terrible. Yeah. Oh. And so is Shaq Fu. So yeah, true. They probably would have done better putting themselves in NBA Jam. But you know alas, great, you know what's a great game? What's a great game? Bill and Beer's Combat Basketball. That was like the that was a launch title for that the was, SNES, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah. I've never played that. I haven't either. It was like it's like a future. <laughs> so how are you telling me it's a great game? Because <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Oh, okay. Um, it always looked kind of weird. weird. Yeah, Jinx, you owe me a beer. Damn. Yes. All right. So that's NBA Jam. This was composed by John Hay, which not a lot of information out there about him. He, uh, he actually wrote the script for the original NBA Jam. There's a script for the NBA well, Jam? Well, you know, all the dialogue and stuff. You so mean, like, evidently he's jam, responsible jam, jam, for... Jam, jam, jam. He's responsible for the He's on Fire. You know, oh, true. Stuff that's become iconic. Yes. We're assuming, with a big ASS, that he Whoa. probably wrote the soundtrack because he is responsible for a lot of the sound in other games. There are a few websites that credit him as being the composer of this game and a few that say the composer is unknown. He's also credited for Demolition Man, Mortal Kombat 3, WWF WrestleMania the arcade game, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, NBA Hang Time, Maximum Hang Time, and NBA Showdown. So a lot of the midway sports games he did a lot of the sound for. And whether or not he actually wrote the music for those games is unknown, but I think it's more than likely that he did the music for the original NBA Jam and Tournament Edition. And just to clarify, that was NBA Showtime, not Showdown. My bad. No worries. I got you. Ooh, that was like an instant clarification. Yo, I was. Yo, it was like I rebounded you, man. And I just put it for the alley oop. Yeah, you did. Switch. I love the jams in NBA Jam. Did you, you used to unlock full court jams? That was the funniest thing. Oh yeah, we just yeah. from anywhere. In the oh court. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just. Anywhere you wanted, just boom, 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 and we would just keep trading back and forth, man. I, I think even people who don't like basketball have probably played oh, NBA yeah. Jam at least once in their life. Definitely. That's how popular the game was. It is really good. Moving on, let's talk about baseball, which is America's pastime, as well as Japan's pastime. This game that we're going to talk about for baseball is from a game called Extra Innings, which I think is one of the only games on this whole list where I think both of us are... Both pretty... of us were like, oh my god, we gotta yeah. pick Extra Innings. Yeah, yeah, and We kind of yeah. collided in the middle, yeah. and we're like, all right, we'll just play two songs then. Yeah. <laughs> so this is two tracks, we're going to play them back to back. The first is the menu theme, and then it's going to go into Massive Stadium. Enjoy! Welcome back. That was Extra Innings, and the first song was from the menu, the main menu music, and the second song was Massive Stadium. So let's talk about menu music first. All right. Sounds good. I really love this song. Yes. It's really short. It's too short. That's why we 
kind That's of... That's the thing, yeah, yeah. The loops are too short in this game, and I, I wish they were, like, expanded upon, because yeah. the music is just so good. It's really good. It's just really high energy. I mean, the, the synths in this are very subdued, though. They're very, like, laid back. They're soft-sounding. They're soft-sounding, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it's still a powerful-sounding song. Oh, I agree. Oddly, you know what I mean? It's like, there's no harsh tones. Right. But it's really energetic. Yeah. I just don't think it's loud enough. Like, I want it to be louder and, yeah. like, pump me up more and, and like... Even though the composition is fantastic in this track, I feel like the arrangement is just kind of... Eh. It is a menu theme. Yeah. So it's not really like while you're in the middle of playing the game or anything. Totally. I like the little whooshes. Like that's right. A, that's a cool little sound effect that's yeah. like whoosh. It's, it's barely do, noticeable, do, 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 do. too. I don't know. For, for some reason, it's like this This sound set I don't think appears in any other no. SNES game that ever made it out in the U.S. that I'm aware of. Well, but it's very, very rich sound. It is. It's very rich and it's very original sounding. This is actually the first in a series of of three games put out by Sony ImageSoft that went under the name Hakanetsu Professional Baseball Gamba League. So this was the original game, and then after this, Hakanetsu Professional Baseball Gamba League 93 came out, followed by uh, Gamba League 3. And so there were three composers that worked on this game, Tetsuya Furumoto, Katsunori Ujie, and Takafumi Fujisawa. Furumoto and Fujisawa worked on all three, while UJ only did the first two games. Those other soundtracks I haven't even heard yet, but if they're as good as the first one, I'm really interested in checking them out. As far as Fujisawa goes, he's really only credited for music for extra innings. Everything else, he's been like a producer, a director, so he's been more of like an overseer of the music. Yeah. He did sound for Legend of Lagaya, which who knows what that means. That could mean like practically anything. But he's had a hand in quite a lot of titles over the years. His last game that he worked on was Siren for the PS2, and that was in 2003, and he was the sound producer. So that was the last title that he released that he had audio work on. He has done some newer games, though. I think the last game he worked on was The Last Guy from 2008. So as far as this game goes, I rented this when I was younger. It kind of reminded me of, like, Baseball Stars, but, like, chibi Almost like the chibi anime style. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, very cute. Yeah. Uh, the menu screen was, I mean, it, it's a very Japanese game. Like, yeah. even the menu screen, when it's player versus computer, the, the player's face is a Famicom or a Super right. Famicom. They didn't even change it to an SNES, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, for the American version. <laughs> so right away you could kind of tell, okay, this isn't exactly something that was heavily localized right. for, the, for the U.S. audience. And that was perfectly fine That's with me because I was totally happy just playing this cute little game. It's weird because this is such an obscure title. And I didn't think that anybody else had played this game yeah. or knew about this game. And when I put it down, you messaged me. You're like, oh my god, you picked extra innings. And I was like, yeah. It's funny because it's one of those games that I rented and I might not have like even remembered that I rented it or whatever, but I recorded the soundtrack on a tape like I did with a lot of the okay. games that I did soundtracks for back then. And so I always listened to this game's soundtrack because there was a sound test in the menu. Right, right. And so, like, the soundtrack just, you know, stuck, stuck with, with me. Yeah. So yeah. when, you know, digital stuff started coming out, it was one of the first ones I made for myself digitally to mm -hmm. get a higher quality recording. When we were like, let's do a sports game, back of my head, I was like, I'm gonna just, Mike's going to be so impressed because I'm going to do extra innings and he's going to love it, but <laughs> yep, yep. you knew about it already. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> um, and even like with, with the Massive Stadium track, a lot of the tracks on this game sound very, very different from one another, and probably because there were three different composers, so they all maybe worked independently. Yeah, Massive that, Stadium sounds a little different. It's yeah. a little bit floatier, a little bit more whimsical, I guess, a little bit more like a you-can-do-it sort of Yeah, well, it, it actually it. plays during, you know, the game while right. you're playing in the Massive Stadium area. Right. And uh, I yeah, love the, those, those, like, chimes that go from speaker to speaker. Yeah, really, yeah. really cool effect. Yeah, the chimes have a really interesting sound. It's like borderline keyboard. This game had, like, what, three stadiums, right? It was, like, small, medium, and large, and... Well, was the it was, like, a, like, rural... Yeah, like, yeah. Grass or like don't I don't I don't remember the names of the stadiums off the top of my years. head. I played it recently, but I didn't pay attention to the names of the stadiums. I remember. I know we're talking about it very highly, and I'm all like you know nostalgiaing out over this title. But I <laughs> hated this title because I was terrible at this game. Like I just remember swinging and swinging and swinging the bat and I just never could connect. And when I did connect, yes. they would always get me. You have like, to swing like before the pitcher even releases the yeah, ball. Yeah. I'm like, how do you know what they're throwing yeah, at you? Yeah, I know. It oh. was really difficult and I would always end up 
way off in the left field because yep. my swing had to be late in order for me to figure yep. out what kind of pitch they were pitching. Yeah, you to me. always had the swing at the tip. I wonder if they, you know, we should get together and play those second two games just to see what they're like. We should play the game multiplayer because I've never played yeah. extra innings multiplayer with anybody. Oh, I used to play with my brother. Oh, we really? rented it. And I remember okay. it being frustrating because, yeah. again, if you keep pitching fastballs, there's yep. no way that they can figure out where they're. It, it's just too fast. It's similar to baseball stars in that sense. Like, yep. The only difference is, I think, I don't know, I, I don't want to say this is better than Baseball Stars. I kind of feel like Baseball Stars is too stiff. This the NES little, Baseball Stars yeah, or Neo yeah. Geo Baseball the, Stars? The NES Baseball Stars. Yeah, well, That's this is more one polished, I, I think. Yeah. Much more. Um, the Neo Geo Baseball Stars, actually, Neo Geo Baseball Stars 2 is probably my favorite oh, yeah? baseball console baseball game of all time. Okay. Um, but let's get a little into the other two composers that we haven't really talked about too much yet. Tetsuya Furumoto worked mainly for Sony in addition to Extra Innings. He also did Hook for Sony Image Soft. He was credited for additional music. And then he was studio director for Extermination in 2001. Katsunori Ujie, while he hasn't done too many video games per se, he is actually quite active in music still. He worked on Extra Innings and Hook, and that was pretty much it for him for video games. However, if you're interested in hearing some of his music, you can head over to soundcloud.com slash katsunori hyphen ujie, U-J-I-I-E, and he's got actually a ton of stuff. He's a programmer for Yamaha Synths. Oh, okay. So he writes sound banks and demonstrations and stuff, so he's got a lot of tunes on SoundCloud that... I haven't, I've only listened to like three or four of them. None of them really sound like extra innings, but a lot of them are really good, very diverse. He's a very talented guy, so if you want to check out what a classic video game composer is doing nowadays, that's the perfect way to do it. We'll Very link cool. to it on our Facebook page. Yeah, sounds good. Extra innings. Can't believe somebody else has played that game. All right, so let's get into our next game. We're going to be talking about football, and I don't mean soccer. I mean football. Sorry to make any American European, football. Yeah, sorry to make any European fans angry. We got some soccer coming up later. We do. We sure do. This track is from one of my favorite football games ever made, Tecmo Super Bowl for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and this is the Playoffs Player One track. Hike! Pretty hard back there, football guy. Tell us, how do you plan on winning the Super Bowl this year? Well, I plan on eating all the right vegetables, lifting the best weights, and playing a lot of Nintendo. Well, that all sounds like a straight lace plan, mister. Hey, wait, did you say playing a lot of Nintendo? You got it, man. The Nintendo hasn't seen much in the way of sports games in over 20 years. Tell him, announcer, dude. That's right, football player guy whose name we can't say without paying a fortune. Do you remember Tecmo Bowl? How about Tecmo Super Bowl? Well then you're in for a treat. Because Tecmo is bringing back the Tecmo Bowl franchise in its latest incarnation, Tecmo Super Ultra Bowl Gaiden. This all new Nintendo Entertainment System title features none of the sports teams you know and love, thanks to a company that rhymes with G-Bay Sports. So instead, we've decided to make this game a little different, featuring some of the most gorgeous NES cutscenes you'll ever see. Tecmo Super Ultra Bowl Gaiden features a sprawling story about a team of football players who each have to make it through perilous platforming, armed gunmen, flying birds that make jumps impossible. Use your football to slash at energy circles that hover above you to grab your next play. Using strategery, you can make it to the goal and save your CIA girlfriend who also happens to be a cheerleader for your team. 
This game sounds pretty silly. You're a football player who's got to grab plays from energy circles? What's next? A love triangle with Ryu Hayabusa? And in the fight of your life against the evil sportscaster known as Johnny Martin, your player is in the middle of a brutal love triangle with the ninja Gaiden man himself, Ryu Hayabusa. Hey, a ninja's got to eat, right? Ninja, out. Really? So that's how I'm gonna win all the Super Bowls. <laughs> and you can too! Buy Tecmo Super Ultra Bowl Gaiden this fall, only on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Wait a minute, was this a commercial? Alrighty. That was Mega Man 3. No, what? No. Alright, it was Ninja Gaiden. It, it, no. Again. It definitely sounded like Ninja Gaiden. Oh yeah, absolutely. What was it really? Like? Oh, that was Tecmo Super Bowl for yeah. the NES. Yeah. What? Love me some Tecmo Super Bowl. I owned the original Tecmo Bowl. Okay. And loved it. Actually, it was one of the only games my father actually played, and I think he got all the way through a championship season. Wow. Which impressed the heck out of me. That is impressive. he didn't play video games. Yeah. And this one, I don't know if I played this one. I played the SNES version. Oh, really? Was so it you haven't Super played Tecmo the game. Super Bowl? Super Tecmo Super Bowl. <laughs> I think it was Tecmo Super Bowl like three or two. Okay, alright. I think they just started numbering them after Tecmo Super Bowl. Actually, really funny, I I I hadn't played Tecmo Super Bowl until I was like like in my twenties. Oh wow. I had always heard of the game and I wasn't that big of a football fan back then. I'm way more of a football fan now. I mean, you know, go pack. Tecmo Super Bowl, I think I started playing that when the virtual console version came out on the Wii. Oh, wow. That late. That like, late. yeah, it was that late. And I loved it. Like, just totally fell in love with the game. I just love how simple it is and how easy the controls are. And, of course, in the original Tecmo Bowl, I don't know if you know this, but Bo Jackson, who's... Like, he was invincible. He was, like, invincible in that game. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. I, of, of all the sports genres that are out there, I think I have the best kind of uh, knowledge of like the history of, of football the games because I was a huge football fan when I was a kid. Okay. Ten Yard Fight was like one of my first NES games. when I, That's how I learned the rules of football before okay. I even watched a game on huh. TV. That's funny. My dad, who's a Yale alumnus, we, we live near New Haven, so he would take me to all the Yale football games. So I'd see like Yale Harvard before I knew like what a big historical game that right, was. Right, right. You know, we would have season tickets to the Yale games. So we'd go every other Saturday. Hmm. We'd watch college football. And then I'd, I've gone to a couple of New York Giants games. My family was big New York Giants. My yeah. brother's still a huge New York Giants fan. So I grew up loving football and, and watching the football and playing football games on TV. Around like the end of middle school, early high school, I just kind of stopped and never really got back into it. But... I can still watch a football game. Like, I can watch the Super Bowl and know right. exactly what's going on. Right, so right. I know a good football game when I see one. Yeah, yeah. And Tecmo Super Bowl is definitely, like, one of the best football games ever made. No no doubt about it. Absolutely. A couple of years back, they came out with Tecmo Bowl Throwback, which was a throwback title, which... Was oh, it was really a virtual console or a it, WiiWare game, right? It was an Xbox, actually. Oh, Xbox yeah, Live yeah, title. Yeah, it didn't okay. come out on the Wii. It came out on, I think, PS3 and Xbox Live. Yes, yes. And what's really cool about the game is that it plays exactly like the old school Tecmo Bowl games, except unfortunately without the NFL license because they lost that because, you know, EA is the devil. But uh, they wouldn't give up the rights, of course. But Tecmo Bowl Throwback has really simple, easy controls, just like the first couple games. But what's really cool about it is you can change the graphics so that instead of being like 3D rendered, instead they are... 2D Super, Ni sprites. Super Nintendo sprites cool. like, with music too, like similar types of music and the soundtracks are really good. You should check it out and that would be fun because really I would cool. actually have somebody to play that yeah, with because no, I downloaded it and nobody plays online. So Yeah, I would totally play that with you. That game is awesome. So Keiji Yamagishi and Ryuichi Nita, both uh, Tecmo stalwarts, both very famous for their Ninja Gaiden soundtracks and also worked on Guitar Man, which we've talked about them on previous episodes, contributed to this soundtrack, and it definitely sounds like it. It's got a very Ninja Gaiden feel to it. This is kind of like a metal speed rock kind of song. Kiji Yamanishi skipped out on Ninja Gaiden 2. He was the... He was washing his hair that day. Yeah, and then Ryushi Nita, he actually did some work with Ninja Gaiden 2, which was one of my favorite games, 
He was a sound director on that. They were like, oh my god, Yamagishi's washing his hair. Nita, get in there! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he just rubbed the Ninja Gaiden 2 soundtrack real quick. <laughs> He's done more... I guess you could say sound producing and sound analyzing for Konami. He did a lot of work on the uh, beat I like media. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did a lot of work on the Beat Mania soundtracks. He's done a lot of really good work. They both have. I'm cool with these dudes. And I'm cool with Tecmo Super Bowl. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to have to gather up some people and do a Pixel Tunes Tecmo Bowl throwback oh, tournament. That, that would, be, that would be awesome. I would be down for that. We're doing that. I don't even like football and I want to play that. I'm doing that. Yeah. I don't like following current football, but I enjoy playing football games. That's gotta get you back my in the clarification football. corner. Anyhow, so enough about football. Let's break teeth. Yeah. I know a couple of our fans are big hockey fans. This is the original ice hockey for the NES in-game theme composed by Soyo Oka and Koji Kondo. He shoots, he scores, ice hockey in-game theme. I love that song. This was another one of my original NES games. I had so many sports games growing up, mainly because my mom was anti-violence, so I was pretty much like <laughs> cornered into sports games. Right, right. Not a hockey fan at all. No? No. It's weird. Um, one of my ex-girlfriends got me into hockey, and uh, we would watch a couple games. We would go see the local like minor league team. The yeah, Wolfpack. I've seen a couple Gale hockey games, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah. No, hockey's cool. I mean, I, 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 no, I'm not as into it now as I was. It, it's enjoyable. I didn't really know the rules. So, like, when I would play this... Get the puck in the other net. Yeah, you know, that was basically... But, it, like, but, icing and all the other right. rules on where players can go, yeah. what their positions are. Even the, I, I don't think, like, ice hockey, the game, followed the exact rules of hockey. No, it didn't. I don't think there weren't even as many players on the rink mm. as... No, there were only three. Three, each right? Team. Usually there's five. Right. Yeah. Nor- uh, normally, I believe. Yeah, there's about five. Um, about. You know, give about. or take. Yeah, give or take. <laughs> Ref's like whatever. You got seven. Yeah. It's about five. He's like what? You got uh, two fat guys and a little guy. Come on, come on. Three. You can yeah. get. Look, you can do five skinnies or three fats. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's one really great thing uh, that you would talk to people about this game. And you'd be like, oh, what's your team? Oh, uh, two fast. It was like skinny. rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. Like the skinny guys were yep, fast, yep. but the, you know, they could get beat up very easily by the bigger ones. Mm-hmm. And the real, real fat guys would kind of lumber down the ice. But if the skinny guy would like attack them, <laughs> just bounce right off them. What would you, uh, what was your team? I usually did one of each, actually. Really? Or, you know what? I, I think I remember doing, it was either one of each or two, two fats and a skinny. And I would just keep the fat guys down the other end, like towards the goal. And the skinny guy would bring the puck up, and then the fat guys would try to okay. smash it in. I would do... I would play with my brother. I mean, we were all over the... We didn't know the rules of, of hockey either, so right. we would just kind of bash each other apart and, <laughs> yeah. and hope that, you know, we didn't <laughs> keep facing off because of icing, whatever icing is. I would do two mediums and then one fat. I never picked the thin guys, because like you said, they would just bounce off you. It's just dumb. Well, it was this and Blades of Steel. I mean, those were the two hockey games. Yep, yep. And Blades of Steel was definitely graphically more impressive. It was, yeah. And had better sound. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I just always liked... You didn't have that dynamic with the three different sized players that ice hockey did in Blades of Steel. So I, I always kind of preferred ice hockey, because you can change your style of play depending on who... You know what size characters you right, picked and right. who you were playing against. True. So you know with Blades of Steel, it pretty much just became five generic guys right. trying to punch each other in the face and rock back and forth on the ice. <laughs> was Blades of Steel? I can't remember. Was that a license like an NHL game? Like did it? No, have, like, it didn't. No, right? no. Okay. Yeah, because this game, ice hockey, all the teams were like world based, like USA, yeah. Canada, England. You know, like you, like Russia or Soviet Union, whatever it was. No, there um, were no official licenses 
during that time period at all that I can remember. I remember the, what are they called? The things that go back and forth, the jambronis or whatever? <laughs> the zambonis? Zambonis. The jabronis. The jabronis, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rock doesn't care how yeah. smooth your eyes is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember that in this game. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. As far as this track goes, we know it was composed by Soyo Oka and Koji Kondo. I'm going to take a stance and say that Koji Kondo only wrote the part towards the end of the track that goes ba da da ba da 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 ba because it's very like Mario. Then he like ran back to his office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just heard like the sliding Mario sounds from like Mario 3, the err, you know, like when you're turning. Oh, I don't man. even know. We don't need to talk to about talk about Koji Kondo. Mario, Zelda, that, that that's it. You know the drill. Mario Maker. Yeah. Oh, uh, such a good game. I know you're not interested. Eh. Go out and get Mario Maker if you haven't yet. It's so much fun. That's my plug for Mario Maker. Anyhow. <laughs> I'm sure so, Nintendo's got their got your paycheck waiting. Yeah, basically. Yeah, right. Uh, oddly enough, for right. a change. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Soya Oka more kind of came into her prime when she composed the music for SimCity and Pilot Wings back at the launch of the SNES. And she has a very kind of easy listening, jazzy style. And you can hear a lot of those jazzy chords and melodies in this game. And I love how the song kind of changes up and made the game really interesting to listen to while you're playing it. Yeah, this game has a really fun, free spirit to it. It's, it's not like dangerous, it's not like in your face. It's just very like floaty and happy and you know, it's like, oh, come on, play the game. You come know? on, guy, come, come on, guy, play the game. <laughs> so yeah, I really like ice hockey. It's it's a fun game. It's an easygoing title that's really fun to play competitively against your friends. And it's, it's not one of those games that you can take really super seriously. I mean, I guess you probably could, but I never did. I mean, if you were playing for money or whatever, sure. But, yeah. You know, Oka also did the uh, arrangement of Koji Kondo's Soundtracks for Super Mario All Stars. That was oh, pretty cool. That, that was pretty cool. Really good rendition of those tunes. That was, and all those songs were also very bright and cheerful sounding as com as compared with their NES. Yeah, versions. her style definitely fits. Right. I think she and Kondo's styles just kind of go well together. And I think, yeah. from what I remember, if I kind of remembering off the top of my head, but I think Kondo actually mentored her a little bit as she, oh, as she entered Nintendo and started composing music. Hmm. Maybe cool. that's why he's credited. Maybe he was mentoring her during the time that she was composing the music for uh, Ice Hockey. Well, speaking of Mario, I think it's safe to say that we can move on to our next title, which is Mario Strikers Charged. And this song is the training song, and it's just simply called Classroom. Go! Thank you. 
that was Mario Strikers <laughs> Charged for the Wii. <laughs> I love this game. I played this game so much. I mean, I played the GameCube one quite a bit, but this one just had a lot of really, like, really nice touches to it. One of the really cool things about this game is, it, okay, so it's soccer, and you get to pick your different teams, so you could pick, like, oh, I want all Toads on for my, like, base players, or I want, like, Birdo, or Wouldn't the team name change guys. depending on the combination of characters? That yeah, you yeah, if I recall. But you, your main guy was one of the big, you know, Nintendo all-star characters in the Mario universe. So you could do Donkey Kong, Peach, Daisy, Mario, Luigi, you know, all those types of characters. Koopa, I think, was one. Bowser. I think even Waluigi was in this game, and Wario, too. It's very possible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they pretty much took the cast of, like, Mario Party and made it into a soccer game. And it is really, 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 really fun. It is. Like, this is one of the most fun sports games you could play out there. It's really, really well polished. It's actually made by Next Level Games, who has done a ton of work for Nintendo. They actually were, I believe, all, or at least based out of Full Sail graduates which was the studio that... Yeah, you know, mostly Americans and Europeans. Yeah, yeah. And they also went on... I think their most recent project was Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. On right, the that's right. And I believe they're also working on that new... Unfortunately, they're working on the new Metroid Federation Force. Yeah, whatever. which, you know, given their pedigree, means that the game might actually not be bad, just not right. what we're looking for in a Metroid. Right, game, exactly. You know? Like, I have faith in them as a development studio, but I just think that... This is the wrong way to go with Metroid. But anyways, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> the one commonality with all these next level games is their composers, and that's right. Mike Peacock, Darren Radke, and Chad York. We've talked about them before. They've only got a few games to their name, and they've they've all worked kind of in concert with each other. But Mario Strikers Charged, uh, the, the Wii version of uh, Punch Out, right, was one of them. And then they also did some work for um, Super Smash Brothers. I think. For the Wii and the Wii U, okay. I believe. Yeah, I mean, if you want to hear more about these guys, you can also hop on the episode 40, which is the fan favorites episode. That's where we played Punch-Out for the Wii. So you can hear more of their work in that episode. So Mario Strikers Charge, a lot of fun. This track in particular is my favorite track. It's a very jazz, funky track. It's just, oh, it's that all over the like, place. kind of like, I want to hear like Bootsy Collins. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. hey, baby, let's yeah. go play some soccer. <laughs> No, it's just it's a really cool track that you can listen to. Just really awesome jazz, great like funky bass, and it's got this like really like, great like riffing guitar that's just like kind of throwing out a couple like quick picks, you know, just like a couple quick notes here and there. It's yeah. really good, and the drums kind of feel more like junglish. Yeah, good stuff. These guys are very eclectic and very multi-talented when it comes to music because a lot of the music in this game is also kind of like almost like prodigy electronic yeah. style stuff yeah but then we've got some really groovy funky tunes like this as well it's a soundtrack that's full of quite a lot of variety yeah yeah i remember a buddy of mine and i would play this online and games got intense man like this this was one of those games that actually ran very well online and it played like very smoothly. Occasionally you get a little bit of slowdown, but ultimately the game was a ton of fun to play if you had the right internet connection. Really good stuff for multiplayer games. Yeah, I never games. played online. I think I only ever played single player. Yeah, single player is fun for a while, but like you got to have that multiplayer dynamic in this game. It's it's like it's a really good like couch game. Mm. So, it's just a bummer cuz all the people that I used to play with like I don't hang out with anymore and that's a shame because this is not even joking like this and Marvel vs. Capcom 2 when Xbox Live came out when that when that version came out we would play nothing but Mario Strikers Smash Brothers for the Wii and and Marvel Marble Marble yeah Marble Marble versus Capcom Marble versus Rycom Cap Rye I don't know go ahead go just go pumper, just, pumper, go, just go away pumper nickel I don't know Let's move on from oh soccer, or football as the Europeans call it. I want to be kind of equal opportunity here. Equal opportunity Why sportist. Why don't we have a lot of European fans, so... You're a European football. fan. Football. Let's go play some golf. That's that's a that's a sport that's the same name oh almost anywhere you go. Uh, golf. Love golf. All right. All right? Okay. This is golf for the Neo Geo, though. Yeah, that song is great. So it's a little bit less 
golf. It's not like Tiger Woods golf, you know? This yeah. is this is Neo Turf Masters for the Neo Geo. This is Grand Canyon Course USA by one of our favorites, Takushi Hayamuda. Four! Welcome back. That was Neo Turf Masters for the Neo Geo. Now that's the arcade version, or is this the Neo Geo console system or the CD Same unit? Same thing, or... brah. Yeah. Well, not the CD, know. but the home version. That's that was the thing about the Neo Geo was that the arcade games were exactly the same as the home console version. So, yes, this was the version that you would play in the arcade or on the cartridge-based system. I don't know if this came out in the Neo Geo. No. CD. It's not one of the games I have for my Neo Geo CD. I just don't know anything about Neo Geo. I gotta school I mean, like, you, man. We yeah. gotta do an episode on that system eventually. There's so, as you can tell, there's so much good music oh, yeah. for the Neo Geo. This track is great. This was Grand Canyon Course, and this is basically the USA or American track. Mm -hmm. It's and, the American course that you played. Right. And this track starts off, I don't know, personally I kind of feel like it's like, like a very surf rock feel to it. And then it kind of gets into these really like like I don't want to say trumpets, but like synth trumpets. Yeah, like soft synths. Yeah, like it follows a lot of those. Like I feel like Hayamuda listened to a lot of golf games that came before it and kind of emulated that feel for the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. But it really knocked it out of the park. Oh yeah, and it goes through like so many different chains ups, and there's a saxophone solo in there, and at the end it kind of gets like this soaring kind of like shoot 'em up style, like heroic theme song at the end before it rolls into the loop. I would just really, really love this track. I it, couldn't wait to share this one. Yeah, this is a really good track. I love the Super Nintendo guitars in it. Yeah. Just the straight up MIDI guitar that just gets thrown in there randomly. It's just like, all right, screw it, let's throw it I always call them the Tim Fallon guitars. This is the first oh, time really? I ever heard them was like in okay. like, you know, Spider-Man and the X-Men versus, or in Arcade's Revenge. Well, these are a little more tinny, I would say. These are, these are a little bit more like Capcom overdriven guitars. Yeah. As far yeah. as like the guitar sound itself goes. The Neo Geo had a YM2610, which had FM capabilities and also uh, kind of sampling MIDI style right. capabilities so that makes sense. as well. So right, it was, right. you get a good combination of those two sounds. This seems to use like not a lot of FM at all and mostly use the sampling capabilities of yeah. the chip. Yeah, no, I mean, you can you can hear there's not much FM in this track. I mean, there's a little bit. Maybe a little bit of the bass. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, it's ultimately a MIDI-based soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. The game is a lot of fun. Definitely worth checking out. Neo Geo arcade stands are kind of hard to find nowadays, especially oh, yeah. with something that's probably going to have Neo Turf Masters in it. But Gotta know, have some cash, man. Yeah, exactly. Usually the way it's set up is a quarter will get you three holes. So you can play That's a whole... she said. <laughs> ah, snap! 
So you can play, you know, nine holes for 75 cents, which is pretty good. And if, you, if you're good at the game and you get birdies, then you can earn free holes. That's what she said. <laughs> so, if, you know, if you get better at the game, you can start playing longer and longer on one quarter, which is kind of cool. That's what she said. Also, yes. <laughs> um, but there's a, it's just a very smooth game. It's... It's arcadey, but it's like it's not as arcadey as like the Golden Tee Golf games that you yeah. see nowadays with the trackball. Or like Mario Golf, the Super Swing Golf. It's, it's yeah. Angaya it's, Golf. It's more arcadey than those. Okay. But less arcadey than Golden Tee. It's right. kind of somewhere in the middle. It's it, there's not a whole lot of options. You know, switching your clubs is very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no way to like adjust if you get a power shot or something right. like with Golden Tee or Mario Golf. Uh, you basically get you know like here's your Here's your clubs, here's how far they go. You know how far you are from the hole. You've got to kind of check your... Self. Self before you wreck <laughs> yourself. Um, you know, check the percentage of your power shots and figure out how, how far you need to go to get to the hole. So there's a little bit of math involved, but it's, it's a lot of fun. There's a cute Japanese girl announcer that tells you like how good of a game you had and how many places you are from like the top of the leaderboard and it's all fully voiced. It's it's pretty impressive. I'm sold. Yeah. I and mean, you said cute Japanese girl. Cute Japanese girl. That's it, man. Takushi Hayamuta has done tons of really great soundtracks. One that we've covered quite a bit is Undercover Cops, which was on our same song Different System 2 episode. That was what, Red Tailed Cat? I think we played? I believe that is the name of the track that we played. It was from episode 37, so if you want to learn more about him, go to that episode. Also, he did Super R-Type, which we played a track from in our Shmups episode. The first one, first not one. the last one, which yeah. was our last episode, but episode 7, which was our Shmup tracks. That was our first Shmups episode, so go check it out if you want to learn more about Takushi Hayamuta. Yeah, that's all I gotta say about Good golf. Game. I'm not a big golf fan. I played golf in middle school, but I really hated it. <clears throat> I liked hitting the ball, but I was like of the Happy Gilmore variety. Like, I would just <laughs> whack the ball. I, and that was it, man. I started off, uh, my grandfather would take me to the driving range. He was a big golfer. Uh, not a very good golfer, mm -hmm. but he loved to play. Uh, I would whack it pretty far and pretty straight, so he's like, well... Why don't I pay for you to take lessons one summer? So mm -hmm. I did, and I took lessons for a couple months mm -hmm. um, at a local course, and you know, learn the ins and outs of the game. Sure. You, you don't become a golf pro in two months, but I, you know, learned well enough to actually go out on the course with him a couple times and play play some nine hole cool. courses with uh, with him and my great uncle, and we mm -hmm. had a lot of fun. One yeah. of my greatest, you know, funnest memories of my grandfather. So cool. But then, you know, once he passed, there wasn't anybody for me to really play with anymore. Right. So I kind of fell out of it. But, yeah. you know, golf is cool. I enjoy it. I don't like watching it on TV. It's no, super boring. It's really boring. Playing it is a lot more fun. And, and right. playing it on, on, on video games, like I actually just today found out that they are releasing a new Hot Shots golf game for the PS4. Oh. So I'm super psyched about that. That's Hopefully cool. Camelot is still behind the, the series because that will be a lot of fun. Yeah, I would and imagine And it might so. even mean a new Motoy Sakuraba soundtrack. Which yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of his classical stuff, but his golf soundtracks are amazing. So. Cool. Stay tuned and we'll maybe have some tunes from that in the future. Maybe, but right about now it's time to get extreme because we are going to talk about extreme sports. And the first game that we are going to talk about in a two-game set is Skate or Die on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and this track is simply called Joust.
Escape or die. Can I choose death? You can choose death if you want. Okay. Not a big fan of this series? I am not. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I like Tony Hawk, but Why don't you marry him? Wait, what? Should you like Tony Hawk? But... Why don't you marry him? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay, five-year-old Ed. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm not a big skateboarding fan, mainly because I just can't do it. I'm just not talented enough to do it. I've never skateboarded a day in my life. Okay. However, I ended up with this game somehow. I don't know if my brother asked for it for Christmas, or it just showed up on my doorstep with a stork or whatever. (laughs) Or Tony Hawk hand delivered it to my mailbox. There you but go. This was one of the games I owned. Again, a lot of these games are games that I owned as a kid, and I just really enjoyed it. And it's it's a tough game. It's it's based on it the Commodore sixty four game. Yeah. And the controls are kind of wonky, and you really need some precise movements in order to be able to get good at it. And having owned it as a kid and playing it a lot, I kind of figured out the tricks of the trade to, you know, get good scores and stuff. And I remember, well, I didn't even remember, I played this game maybe a couple days ago, just like as a refresher for yeah. the show, and I sucked so bad. Yeah, like, yeah. how did I do all this cool stuff when I was a kid? Mm-hmm. And I wish I, like, videotaped myself playing it so I remember all the, like, the cool tricks and stuff that I did. A little bit of it came back to me here and there, but there's these, like, these downhill races which kill everybody. Mm -hmm. Because if you jump and you land and you're not exactly facing the same way that you were when you land, you fall off your skateboard. There's like no... There's there's no no forgiveness. Forgiveness, right. Yeah, exactly. Mm. The music was written by Rob Hubbard, who's got got more Commodore 64 titles under his belt than I think I have days that I've lived at this point. (laughs) But Kyle Granger and Christopher Grigg are also credited for it. Kyle Granger's name on the internet only pops up in association with Skate or Die. So I don't know if he's just helped out on the C64 version or right. what. Chris Grigg was credited for the PC version of Maniac Mansion. That's the only other place I can find his name. Obviously, Rob Hubbard was definitely the right. main composer on this and the C64 version. And I just, the, the theme from Joust is just one of my favorite NES songs of all time. It was a really kind of quirky time signature. Right. Very, very energetic. Very non-traditional. And I love that chuggy part at the end. Dun, 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 dun. Right. It just sounds like a cool metal song. And I really um, enjoyed it because this is one of the two-player parts of the game, too. So my brother and I, basically, it's two skaters on either side of an empty swimming pool. And you would kind of, you know, swoop down at each other. And you both have these, like, American Gladiators style. I was going to say American pontoons. Gladiators. Yeah. 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 You can move up and down. As you go back and forth across the pool, and you would have to hit the B button as you got near the person. If you were on the same plane, whoever hit the B button first would knock the other person off. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty cool and a lot of fun. And he and I would just kind of like run at each other and try to get get each other off of our skateboards. So we listened to this song a lot, and it kind of got ingrained in my childhood psyche. So that skater died. There weren't a lot of sports games that I played when I was young that were single player experiences only. I think that's one of the reasons why I never picked this up and never got into it. Tony Hawk, I think I just liked for the music. Tony Hawk was just fun. And it was just a fun game and it was easy to control and everything. And this was really hard to control when I played it. I mean, granted, I played it years and years and years after it came out, but I just couldn't get into it. Musically, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's not, it's not one of those soundtracks that I would like play over and over again, but like, if it was on, or if somebody was playing the game or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, these it's tracks are okay. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not off-putting. There's no harsh tones. Right, right. Rob Hubbard was actually pretty good with the NES sound set because it's, you know, wavetable synth, just like the C64 was. Mm-hmm. So we knew how to build some, some good easy listening or easy to listen to sounds. The uh, theme song to this game is what gets people's attention right. the most. It's a, just a very fast-paced kind of speed metal thrash track. Mm-hmm. But I just really wanted to show this one off because it's one of my, my favorites aside from that really cool title theme music. And, and I, I, I agree with you. If I had picked this one up as a rental, I probably would not be like, put this on my Christmas list. Right. Like, yeah, this is a game that I want because I would have been very frustrated with it. Mm-hmm. I think it's just owning it for a decade or so. It's just after, you know, throwing it in every once in a while. It just kind of 
things start to work out for you. Right. You start to get better at it. And it was like, a, I knew how hard it was. So when I was like jumping and grinding across all this stuff and doing the downhill dash and getting really good, I knew that I was doing something a lot of people couldn't do because I yeah. knew how difficult it was to start doing all that stuff. The so. second game had more of a like... A little more of an arcade uh, feel. Yeah, yeah. And I just, same thing. This, Ski or Die, Skate or Die 2, I mean... Yeah, I never picked up the other two Skate or Die or Skate or Die 2. I don't even yeah. know if I ever rented them. Yeah. I'm just kind of stuck with this one. No, I mean, people would be like, oh, you didn't like Skate or Die? Oh, you'll love Skate or Die 2. And I'm like, <laughs> cool. And then I would pick it up for like three bucks and be like, this is terrible, I'm returning this. So, not a bad game, just not my cup of tea personally. Let's move on to our next extreme game. All right, our next extreme game is Winter Gold. And this was on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a track by Jerome Tell. Called Menu. That's true. It's called Menu. Let's get extreme. Let's menu it up. that song starts I forget it's a Super Nintendo song yeah. it doesn't sound anything like an SNES track no it's true and then those guitars come in and I'm like oh Super Nintendo of course oh you're so charming it's Super crazy. Nintendo so yes that was a game released only in Europe called Winter Gold or Winter Gold FX and that was a just what it sounds like it's a winter sports game using the Super FX chip very, very impressive. Uh, the music, obviously, also very, very of impressive. Course. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I love this whole game from beginning to end. The, the, the game kind of has like a demo scene style presentation with just huge flashing, scrolling letters on the screen and giant, uh, like, it almost looks like full motion video, basically. Huge polygonal characters doing extreme sports behind kind of like a staticky background and everything is moving and there's all the menu screens and everything is full of motion and even even the games themselves are very highly stylized to kind of compensate for the very few polygons that are on the screen at the same time. A yeah. Lot of fun. Yeah, the track itself is really like good. <laughs> yeah. That's basically a good way to put it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like thinking about the way to explain how I feel about the track. And I, the only thing I could get out was good. But let me let me see if I could break this down. The beginning part, you've got you've got like this like funky bass line that's like slamming. Like it's it's very like yeah. And and you've got these drums that kind of like roll on top of this bass line. Like it's a really heavy sounding bass. Uh, and mi mixes really well with the bass drum sound to it. And then you get these awesome, like, just single note, like, keyboard hits, like, damn! Just like a, like a stain, like a... Stinger? Like a sting. And then from there, it kind of rolls into this, like, really cheesy, like, like lounge guitar almost. <laughs> it's just awesome. If you listen closely, it uses the same sound set that Tim Falling used for Spider-Man and X-Men versus... No, uh, that makes sense. No, no, no. Spider-Man and X-Men in our case, Revenge. Yeah. And uh, it's really cool to hear, because it's an incredible sound set. You know, mm -hmm. it makes really good music for the SNES, and it's really cool to, to hear it in a different and equally talented musician's 
hands, you know, from from Tim, from the Fallen Brothers to to your own tells. Right. So, yeah, it's kind of cool what somebody else can do with that with that same sound. Fallen Brothers kind of took more of a prog rock kind of spacey yeah. atmosphere and this to is their more of a tracks. dance techno. This is disco kind of feel. It's just got so much going on with the track. It's funky. It's it's jazzy it's 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 groovy it's got the great hip-hop vibe to it dance oriented just really solid track this is a game that i wish other people could play or this is a game that i wish other people could play um like i said never made it out over here it's unplayable on u.s super nintendo completely systems. unplayable well yeah because it's a pal game and it needs the timing of Mm. You know, the Super FX chip it just creates a lot of technical difficulties. Right, because so, it runs in 50 hertz, not 60. Yeah, mm. so the only way to play it stateside is to emulate it, unfortunately. Wow, that's rough. Um, and even, I tried playing it in, in one emulator and it kept freezing up. Like, I had to mm. use um, SNES 9X instead of ZSNES. So, you can even only play it on one of the two most popular emulators. It's weird, but I had emulators. a lot of fun while I was checking it out. Um, but if you live in Europe, go track down a copy. I don't know how much they're going for over there because you can't really find them on American eBay, but... You live in Europe. Sometimes nice. I wish I did. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Excellent. All right. Let's get on to our next track. This is the Sport of Dodgeball. This the is... Ball of Dodge. This is Super Dodgeball, but not the NES or the Arcade Super Dodgeball. This is the Neo Geo Super Dodgeball. This is the Riki Team Stage. Another really impressive Neo Geo track. Let's check it out. Was from Super Dodgeball, for the Neo Geo, and that was Riki Team Stage. Composer, we only know him or her by the name Ida. Ida. I D A. I D A. And there's no information about this alias whatsoever anywhere. So if somebody out there can help us with a clarification corner for next episode with any other info about this, We'd be really appreciative. It's the Introductory Dudes Association. That's where they introduce you to being a dude. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. I went to that once. Mm Mm-hmm. They kicked me out. Mm Mm-hmm. They said I was too much of a dude. Yeah. I was a bad enough dude already. You were a bad enough dude already. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Wow, wow. This was Technos Japan's last video game ever. Ooh. Which is kind of sad. It takes the characters from the Kunio Kun universe, River City Ransom, and the original Super Dodgeball right. and all those games. Barf. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and puts them in a big dodgeball. It's, so it's kind of like an homage, a throwback to the original NES game. 
and it plays exactly identical to it, except the characters now are, they all have their own personalities and voices, and the, the backgrounds are huge and sprawling and have huge animations. You pick your first leading guy, and he's kind of like your star player, and, you know, similar to like Mario Strikers Charge, where you get your, your striker character. Right, right. You get your main character for this game, and as you go through the game, you collect star players from the teams that you beat. Oh, that's neat. And you can choose to keep them or or turn them away as the game goes on. So by the by the time you get to the final team, you have, you know, basically three star players of your choice. Kind of like Mega Man Soccer. Very similar. Yeah. So they each have their own superpowers where, you know, you can do a jump slam and it'll, it'll explode into a million balls or, you know, turn invisible or catch on fire or whatever. Mm characters have their own energy bar so it's you know the nes version of super dodgeball was really good but played with slowdown and flicker and it just wasn't programmed very solidly and this one really cleans all of that up and just makes it extremely playable very fun huge amount of fun with two players cool and the music is great too i mean this one's just basically like one giant keyboard solo with a cool little chuggy guitar i like those chuggy background guitars i yeah. guess every song i seem to pick I'm like, it's got those cool chuggy guitars in the uh -huh. background, but it's just a cool little accompaniment to the to the to the percussion. The whole soundtrack is really good. This is so Riki team stage and other stages, depending on where they appear in the world, have different national themes to them. So like similar to like the Street Fighter 2 right. soundtrack, you'll hear different like jungle themes or mm -hmm. Hindi or Indian or stuff like that. Right, so right. and they're all done really, really well. Yeah, I don't have that much experience with Super Dodgeball. I mean, I've played the Game Boy Advance one. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, the only one I played. And I, I don't even think I've played the NES one. I don't know. Again, one of those games that you yeah, really need to play with multiple people, or you know, it's a multiplayer game, and I just didn't have anybody to play it with. So I, it was always one of those games that I would go and you know skip, unfortunately. That's a shame, because it's a a lot of fun. Oh yeah, no, I'm sure it's a cool game. I mean, like I said, I, I played the Game Boy Advance one, really liked it, had a lot of fun with it, but yeah, you gotta play these games with, with people. Yeah, You just yeah. do. If the Super Nintendo version of this game had come out in the US, there was one released in Japan in 1993 that it probably would have picked up a lot more fans. Probably. Just because I think with the NES being plagued with so much of that slowdown, that would have been eliminated on mm -hmm. the SNES, and it would have been a little more fun. True. But the by then the the, the Kunio Kun um, mythology and the the characters and the everything was getting really big, so there was a huge story built into the SNES version or the Super Famicom version of the game. So I think localization would have just taken yeah. too much for it to come out over here. Hmm. But That's a shame. Bummer. Oh well. So because Technos went out of business. Actually, before this game was released, believe it or not, oh, wow. a home version was never made. So you could have only played this game in arcades. So nowadays, unless you have a conversion kit for the home, the only way you can play this at your house is to you know use like MAME or a, right. you know, some sort of emulator Emulation. to play the game. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely worth a shot. Yeah, cool. Our next track, moving through this at a breakneck pace today, because there's not a lot of composer information. And yeah, stuff. it's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. On this one, we do have some composer information on. This is actually our most modern game of the podcast True. selection. This is Pilot Wings Resort, the pedal glider theme. Sit back and relax. Ah. Uh.
That song was so smooth, man. I just feel like going to sleep. Yeah, seriously. And like sit back with a nice mojito ah. on the beach. I can literally see palm trees when I listen to that <laughs> yes, song. Close your eyes and see <laughs> a Jamaican monkey smoking a cigar. So that was. Wait, the, what? I don't. I was just gonna <laughs> skip by that one. That was Pedal Glider on the Pilot Wings Resort game for the 3DS. I don't know. I find these games totally boring. But yeah, that's me. You know, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of them, but I do have this for the 3DS, and I do take it out every once in a while and yeah. play with it. I play. That's what she said. Oh <laughs> snap! <laughs> Again. Oh, you make it too easy. Yeah, I do. The SNES version of Pilot Wings was one of my most played games when I was really a kid. You know, again, it was like this and Mario World. It was like Pilot Wings and Mario World. Oh, bro. I would have that played. Mario World and F Zero. I think were my first three games. So it's basically all I played. So basically, really the launch time. titles. Yeah, exactly. Everything with Final Fight because it was violent. God forbid. Right, right. Look what that got me, Mom. Yeah, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Final Fight fan still. <laughs> <laughs> You said that with such bitterness. Well, it's true. <laughs> Anywho, so yeah, this game kind of brought me back to my pilot wing roots a little bit. It, it is fun. Mm -hmm. It was basically made as a showcase for the 3D capabilities of the 3DS. This was the game that they basically threw in at like the Best Buy demo kiosks right. in the States uh, so that you can really get a feel for the depth that the screen can provide. It almost prevented me from buying a 3DS really? down the road. Yeah, I remember playing it in Best Buy and being like, oh, I do not like this 3D aspect. I don't huh. like it at all. And it wasn't until maybe about a year later that I went back and played something else and was like, okay, all right. I think I played Dead or Alive, actually. Yeah, that's what yeah. sold me on getting one. The, so. uh, I was working at Best Buy at the time. So, okay. you know, I was there when the kiosk was set up. So I would I would play it often, you know, every every other day or so after the store would close or before it would open, I'd, I'd check it out a little bit before mm. my boss called me and told me to get back to work. Mm -hmm. You know, I enjoyed it. I, I, I didn't get a 3DS until well after you did True. anyway. So well, that was my second one, too. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you're not a big handheld guy. Yeah, and I still don't play it very often, mm. but this is one of the games that I, I do enjoy. It's not one of my favorite titles ever, but yeah. the music is great. Yeah. The cool thing about the 3DS is it's one of the first Nintendo handheld consoles that can really handle compressed live audio. Right. So, like, you know, GBA and the DS mostly used sequenced music and this they can really record live music and then play it through the game so you get these really cool soundtracks like this with a lot of different varied instruments and so asuka ito composed this as well as the rest of the pilot wings resort soundtrack this is the only one that has like a really reggae vibe very mario to feel to it yeah and banjo too a little bit later on yeah i kind of feel that a little yeah bit. like with the uh the harmonica yeah yeah yeah, yeah very banjo feeling and then I, I like the horns that come in too it's got a very kind of full feel to very kind of authentic jamaican sound. yeah no the whole thing just sounds like a big band like a big jamaican reggae band playing in your backyard while you're you know like you said sipping on mojitos yeah you just need a little steel drum i think that's yeah. the only thing to make it a little more yeah. authentic yeah feeling it kind no, of lacks that's, they're brush drums instead of the. Instead of so the maybe steel it was drums. a creative decision to stay away from the steel drums. I don't maybe. know. We haven't really talked about Asuka Ito, I think, at all yet. So she mm -hmm. worked on a lot of music based games. So Jam with the Band, Rhythm Heaven, Rhythm Heaven Fever, and Rhythm Tengoku, the best, plus a lot of very music heavy games known right. for their really, really good soundtracks. Yeah. She also worked on Style Savvy Trendsetters, which came out in. <sighs> Best game ever, right up there with Barbie's Horses. Yeah, it's Japan only for the 3DS, so I don't know about that one. However, you know, basically, so she's really only done DS and 3DS games, so if you want to listen to her stuff, strap on a pair of headphones and get your handheld out and start playing some rhythm games. Oh, you were walking a dangerous line there. Hey, man, just because I say strap on doesn't mean I'm going there. Your head, yeah. That's what yeah, she said. Yeah, did it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyhow, that'll oh be a my. nice little edit for me to take care of, or you to take care of later. Let's, sure. Let's move on to our next and final sports track of the day. And that would be Side Pocket for the Sega Genesis. And this song is called Ace in the Hole. Enjoy.
Welcome back. That was our final track of our sports podcast, or our retro sports, or our sports cast. Oh, snap. There you go. That was Side Pocket on the Sega Genesis, and that song was called Ace in the Hole, and that was a soundtrack by Imi Shimizu. And she's done quite a bit of work. We talked about her a little bit on High Seas Havoc, which she did in our Free Pick episode, which yeah, was episode, what, 41? Uh, yeah, Free Pick Championship 41, edition. yeah. So this song is just really laid back, really chill. I mean, it's got a really great upbeat, funky bass line to it. And the synths are very, like, kind of splashy, very, I don't know, I guess you could say that Maybe it's just because the soundtrack is a very quiet laid back soundtrack overall that I would say that it's a very quiet song. But this is probably the, one of the more energetic songs on the soundtrack. Yeah. The rest of it's kind of like more loungy. Yeah. Very loungy, very laid back, just very like chill, jazz, really good smuff. St- smuff. Really good smuff. So I don't know. Do you play pool at all? I do. Quite you a do? bit actually. Yeah. yeah. No, me too. Yeah. Pool's cool. Why haven't we ever played pool together? Dude? I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I don't think we've ever played pool together. Hmm. Because we only play games. Yeah, right? I mean, we should just go hit a pool hall sometime. Yeah, and we should just for grab our money. Grab our sticks and go play pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Oh, boy. A side pocket is a really good simulated pool game if you're into billiards, which, I don't know, I personally consider billiards a sport. It's as much of a sport as bowling is, in There's my There's debate. However, when you define sports as somebody using, skillfully using their body to... Never mind. You're walking dangerous territory balls there. Balls and holes and sticks okay. and... Good night, everybody. Put your stick in a hole and... No, you put the balls in the hole. That's even worse. You're doing it backwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So... <laughs> I got nothing left to say about Side Pocket. Uh, I mean, the the game is really fun to play. One thing I will say about it is it's probably one of the better pool games to come out. I mean, the Nintendo and Super Nintendo and Genesis, all of them had, uh, especially the Nintendo, had a lot of pool games. Yeah. There was one particular one on the PlayStation that I used to play all the time. Oh, yeah? I don't remember what the name of it was. Yeah, I remember playing, like, Virtual Pool on the N64, and I just remember getting a headache from it because it's just so difficult to play. Backstreet, Backstreet Billiards on the PlayStation was okay. fantastic and that was like my pool game of choice. But I used to play Lunar Pool on the NES. Lunar that was Pool. Fun. Yeah, Lunar Pool was good. So, you know, Side Pocket's just a really chill game, really good soundtrack. I haven't played it on the Super Nintendo or the Game Boy. I don't think it, it didn't come out on Nintendo, did it? No, Side Pocket. Oh, I don't know. Eh, maybe. I don't know. Well, I've only played it on the Genesis and I can say that the soundtrack is definitely matching the gameplay as far as just being really laid back very chill relaxed really good stuff so if you're looking for something that has just a really strong solid tone to it and really chill bass lines check it out because it's good stuff yeah it is pretty well known for its cool soundtrack yeah um i hear a lot of similarities between this and the high seas havoc yeah. soundtrack same composer so if you were one of those few people that did vote for the high seas havoc track <laughs> yeah. during the free pick episode right go check it out i think you'll enjoy it yeah definitely should we reveal the theme of our next podcast i think we could we might we should we could we will we would evidently we will we so did next podcast would be the first podcast of october and you know what that means, boys and girls. <laughs> it's time for Spooky Tober. Spooky Tober. <laughs> spooky Tober. Oh God. Oh, no, it comes back. Are we gonna have another spooky contest? We, well, that, are. we have to save that for the second we'll podcast of the month. We'll save that. You know, I'm gonna put that in my little spooky side pocket. All right. Spooky side pocket. Spooky side pocket. Yeah, man. It's like the Dracula so- <laughs> pool game. <laughs> Next episode is gonna be Castlevania handhelds. Yes, I know you've all been looking forward to this. For quite some time. Absolutely. Yeah. I know I have. It's been a year. Yeah. So, if you haven't heard our original Castlevania podcast, which was last October's podcast, right. go check it out because it was a great podcast full of tons of cool songs from the Castlevania arcade and home ports. Right. 
And so this one will be limited to handheld hand Consulvan Consulvanias. Consulvanias. Handheld Vanias. Last time, last year, we did Consulvanias. This time, we're doing handheld Vanias. Exactly. So Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, DS. Game Gear, just kidding. 3DS? Game, no. Game.com? No. What? Engage? Oh, go home. Turbo Express? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this podcast and want to tell us how you felt about it, go to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, and you can also take a moment to review our lovely little show here and give us a rating. Tell us what you thought. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you'd like to see. What tell us like what color. Hear? Tell us what color shoes you think we're wearing. I don't know. You could also listen to us on youtube.com forward slash dongled. And dongled is like the dongle cable in your computer, but with a D at the end. Because you'd love the D. Because you love the D. Oh, snap. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, I can't even look at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> follow us on Twitter at Pixeltunes Radio. You can follow me at Ruiner9 or follow Mike. You can follow me on Twitter as well. I'm at DYHPTG, which stands for Dude You Haven't Played This Game, which is on the YouTube channel, which you can also check out. Good times, good reviews. And most importantly, if you want to have a little conversation with us, join us on Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Pixeltunes Radio. You can join us where we have lovely conversations about wonderful video games and their video game music. And that's all I got. That's all I got, too. Yeah, man. This was a fun episode. Yeah. Lots it made me want to play sports. It, yeah. Right? I'm going to go play some Tecmo Bowl. Yeah. That maybe, should be fun. Maybe go play some real sports. Go play hockey. some pool. It would be a good time. I taught myself to rollerblade. I'm sorry. By playing basketball in my driveway. Whoa. While on rollerblades. Wow. Because dribbling would take my mind off of skating. Okay. That's how sportsy this guy is right wow. here. Wow. Look at me. Yeah. Yeah. Sportsing it up. Spiffy. Yeah. Yeah. Now I gotta run on a treadmill because I got kids and I can't leave the house. Oi. 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 Son of a. Uh, All right. Oi, Gavolt. This is the Brooklyn guy and the Jewish guy. Uh, it's kind of the same thing, actually. Yeah. Signing off. We'll what see are you, you gonna in, do? We'll see you in two weeks for Castlevania handheld. Followed by Spooky Tunes at the end of October. Spooky.